In the 21st century, our world is far more connected and interdependent than you would think. Trade routes, energy lines, even food supply chains, they're all crisscrossing across the world. You don't realize this until it is disrupted. And that is exactly what the Russia-Ukraine war has done. The raging war that has today entered six months has interrupted almost all sense of normalcy in the world order. Countries are in a split, choosing sides that benefit them. But climate experts are far from choosing their foes and friends. For many decades, climate change has been on the back burner. And just when governments around the world started noticing the glaring effects, Russia started its quote-unquote special military operations in Ukraine and shifting the focus climate change was receiving. When we asked experts, we found out that the issue is twofold. One, that the war has overshadowed the fight against climate change. And two, it is making countries backtrack on the little achievements made towards a cleaner planet. You see, Russia is among the biggest fuel suppliers in the world. And with the West sanctioning anything even remotely related to the Kremlin, the energy sector is staring at an uncertain future. Experts were hopeful that this will prompt the world to shift to renewable energy sooner. But to their disappointment, the opposite has happened. To meet the demands at home, the US and European countries marched in the opposite direction. Lights at old coal mines are glowing again, which is cheaper and not mono mono monopolized by Russia. But its combustion limb emits significantly more greenhouse gases. And this comes just a few months after tall promises at the Glasgow COP26 summit. Countries that had been pushing for the coal phase-out proposal are turning their backs on it. Germany, Austria and the Netherlands lifted restrictions on the fossil fuel power plants and also extended the lives of dozens of coal plants that were scheduled to close by 2030. France is also actively considering restarting its St. Avold coal-fired power plant. Remember, this plant was shut this March and this is having a ripple effect on non-EU countries as well, like Australia and Indonesia. These are major coal-producing countries that are about to reach their export peaks. The United States, on the other hand, is relatively energy independent. Even though the country has banned oil, gas and coal imports from Russia, it has had a very minimal effect on the demands. But this does not mean that the U.S. is faithful to its promises. In 2021, President Joe Biden pledged to significantly reduce greenhouse gas emissions over the next decade and also send long-promised climate funds to help developing countries. None are, are on track. The war in Ukraine put all these international commitments on hold. Since the outbreak of the war, the U.S. has provided approximately $9.1 billion in security assistance to Ukraine. Somehow, this had to be squeezed out from the climate finance. The UN Secretary General had also warned about this within months of the war. Obviously, when we have a dramatic situation with the dimension of this war that has no comparison with any other conflict in the last decades, there is inevitably a diversion of attention in relation to many other issues. And uh, uh, the sense of urgency in the debate on climate has, of course, suffered with uh, the war in Ukraine. This is not the first time that geopolitics has taken precedence over action against climate change. Since the Industrial Revolution, climate experts have been warning about the implications of a warmer planet. But as it means filling the pockets of the rich, there have almost always been issues more important than something so life-threatening as climate change. And joining us live from Warsaw is Wojciech Jakubik, energy analyst at Business Alert. Thanks very much for being here on the broadcast. If you can help Thanks. us understand better the impact that the Russia-Ukraine war has had when it comes to the fight against climate change, not like the uh, countries that have been making these climate pledges were sticking to them, uh, but the war has definitely once again put the fight against climate change on the back burner, unfortunately. Okay, so Russia is making Europe using whatever power plant it has. So it is using also the coal power plants, especially the Western Europe, which is heavily dependent on natural gas because it was a 
so-called transition fuel. You cannot go 100% renewables today, so you go through transition, which was fueled by natural gas. And this natural gas in 40% was coming from Russia. So Russia, Russian Gazprom is limiting gas supply since holidays 2021. And that is why we have an enormous gas price. It is like uh, almost 300 euro per megawatt right now. It is even higher than at the beginning of Russian invasion on Ukraine. And that is making us Europeans using use whatever we can. Poland is uh, dependent on coal in 70 percent. This amount will only increase because coal is what we have. And in the short term, of course, we have this emergency policy that is impairing climate uh, policy. But in longer run, uh, quitting fossil fuels is a part of solution. It is making us less dependent on Russia, but on any fossil fuel in the end. And in the end, with the technological development, also with nuclear energy in place, we could quit fossil fuels and reach the climate goals. Right. Uh, when it comes to these climate pledges that have been made by the countries we've been talking about, what do you make uh, of these commitments that look very good mm -hmm. on paper, but will see a lot more efforts, uh, which the war, of course, has dampened for now? So we'll see uh, heavier uh, emissions from Germany, Netherlands, from countries which were to decrease their emissions significantly, uh, significantly. Uh, but uh, one of the reasons is also because Germans are quitting nuclear power. If they would go nuclear, they wouldn't rely on natural gas so much and they wouldn't need to re recover the coal generation uh, today. But we cannot overcome these obstacles uh, by, uh, uh, like in a week or in a month. You need uh, to invest in years of energy transition and that's when we'll see some results. But in 20s, depending on the uh, size, the scope, the, the length of energy crunch in Europe, we'll see heavier CO2 emissions and climate policy is, uh, is lost because of what Vladimir Putin is doing in Ukraine. Indeed. We are leaving it there for the moment. Thanks very much for joining us on the broadcast. Thank you. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.